Welcome to my video about rotating points using polar coordinates. My name is Daniel Bowers, creator of atutor.xyz. You can find more resources there. This table of contents can also be found in the video description with links to take you directly to those places in the video. Rotation about the origin with polar coordinates is super simple. In fact, I'm not going to go through the steps uh, individually, I'm just going to show you by example. So for in our first example, we're going to rotate the point 5, 0 degrees, 90 degrees about the origin. Now, we know basically what this is going to look like. 90 degrees would look something like this, and we'll get the result right here. You could just take a protractor and uh, put the axis point right here and put the starting point at zero degrees and then find 90 degrees away that, that same distance and draw a point there. Uh, protractors are very useful for drawing on actual paper but um, if you have many points or if you um, need to show the calculations for some reason uh, a protractor will not be very useful to you. This is the formula you use. You simply add together the uh, original angle that uh, locates your point and add it to the rotation angle. So we're going to add 0 and 90 degrees, which gets us 5, 90 degrees. I like to put a box around my answers. Example 2. Let's plot this point. And again, you could use a protractor if you have paper, but in many cases, this is um, not useful. Here's our formula. Simply add the angles together. Remember that addition and subtraction are two sides of the same coin, really. Calculate, and here's your answer. Rotations about any point get much more complicated. In these situations, you're not using the origin as the axis, you're picking some other point. Here are all the steps so that you can pause the video uh, to just get an overview of it if you, li if you like. As I go through these steps, I'm not going to explain them fully. I think it makes more sense to explain them in the context of an actual problem. But you can pause on these pages to um, use them as a guide while you do your own work. Something I should say here is that the um, matrices that contain your points could be any size. Um, the ones I show here in these formulas are two rows by one column, but you could have two rows by any number of columns and it would work the same way. And you'll see that later on when we uh, take a look at the spreadsheet I made. Example 1. Rotate the point 4, 27 degrees, negative 88 degrees, about the point 2, 150. Now, sometimes it helps just to start off by getting an idea of what it's going to look like in the end. So what are we dealing with here? We'll say that this is 4 away, 27 degrees, uh, that's about right there, and the point 2... 150 would be about right there. So if you were to rotate this approximately negative 88 degrees, here, let me try that again. It would look something, I'm sorry, it would look something like this. Okay. Sometimes 
if you just want to put down some initial thoughts on your paper before you dig into the calculations, that's just fine. It gives you a good idea of what the answer will look like so that if your answer looks different, you'll know you did something wrong. And it just kind of helps loosen the wheels of your brain a little bit, uh, gets the, the gears turning. and um, So that's not a problem, but you don't have to do this if you don't want to. Okay, let's convert from polar to Cartesian coordinates. Our point in x and y is 3.56, 1.82. Our axis point in Cartesian coordinates is negative 1.73, 1. And of course, you can take the time to go through these steps more slowly, but uh, I'll let you do that on your own. Now we need to recalibrate the terms, the points, in terms of the axis point. Now, you might have more than one point uh, that you're trying to rotate. In this case, we only have one, so don't worry about the S part in points there. So our, our point to be rotated in terms of the axis point is 5.29.82. That is to say, it's 5.29 to the right of the axis point and 0.82 above the axis point. Now, by the way, the axis point will always, always be 0, 0 if you calibrate it to itself. But this is unimportant for our work. It might help you to understand the whole situation to know this fact, but we don't really need to put it into our work. Now we need to come up with a rotation matrix to multiply it by our results. And that's going to look like this. The rotation matrix is made up of, oops, I'm sorry, let me pull that back. Our rotation matrix is made up of uh, trig functions. So uh, this just, it just works out that way to, to rotate these points. Um, if you are already familiar with uh, how to rotate uh, matrices, I'm sorry, to multiply matrices, it works sort of like this. You have uh, the top row multiplied by the first column, and that gets you the top left uh, item in your result, okay? And then if you multiply bottom and first, you get the bottom first element of your uh, result matrix. So in our situation, we've rotated the points and we get the point one, negative 5.26, which remember is in terms of our axis point. So, and it's also in, in Cartesian coordinates. Now we need to recalibrate the rotated points in terms of the origin. So we just add the axis point uh, components to our result. And so our uh, result is now negative 0.73, negative 4.26. So that's in terms of the origin, not the axis point. Now we need to convert from Cartesian to polar. So we do that. Remember that inverse trigonometric functions are angles, okay? And I'll discuss this in a, another video at some other time. But when you see an inverse uh, trig function like this, think angle, okay? Now, we need to correct our angle. Remember, at the very beginning when we drew that picture, just to get an idea of what we'd be dealing with, our result was in quadrant 3, not quadrant 1. Inverse trig functions 
can give you the wrong angles. The angles are useful, they're just incorrect. So uh, if you recall that if a trig function, well, in this case, it gave us this, which is incorrect. I'll just, I'll make it purple to distinguish it. That's incorrect. Now, this is an angle of uh, 80.3 degrees, but since we are in uh, quadrant three, we want an angle that is 80.3 degrees below the horizontal line. Now that results in, uh, I'll just redo this in blue here. This results in an angle of 260.3 degrees. See, right there, something like that. Uh, actually, it would, it would be a mirror image of this. I, sh I should draw this better. There's our answer. Okay, now for some other examples. We'll go to my uh, spreadsheet that you should be able to download at atutor.xyz. So let's head over there. Okay, let's say that our axis point is uh, maybe two away from the origin. Oops, let's get that out of here. Two away from the origin and an angle of, we'll say, 30 degrees. Okay. Remember, this will be our axis point. Now let's, I'm just gonna type in some random, random points. Okay, so now we have some random points that I plugged in, and these are these are the points we're rotating, okay? And we're going to put them in the, the other page over here, okay? okay. I've um, reformatted these cells so it gives us a, a more accurate picture of what these points are in Cartesian coordinates. So let's go over here. We'll put 1.73 and 1 in the axis part 1.73 and 1 okay I'm just gonna rotate them 49 degrees that sounds good to me now our points are gonna be these so 2.82 and 1.03 2.82 and 1.03 uh, negative 98 uh, negative 9.98 and negative 0.17 and 1.93 and negative 2.3. Okay, I'm just gonna double check real quick. Oh, that should be negative. Okay. So now let's go through what happens. We have our points matrix right here, okay? Um, obviously your line that you would draw would be right here, not way over here, but I made a responsive, um, responsive thing that will fill in as you fill in the. Anyway, let's just move on. Our axis point provides uh, the elements of this matrix, which we use to calibrate. Now, like I said before, you don't need an ax a, a matrix for this part. You will for the next part, but this just uses matrices. Uh, it's no big deal if you just uh, do it the other way I showed you earlier. So we subtract that matrix and we get these results, the calibrated points matrix. So these are these are the points in terms of the axis point. Okay. So now we take our results from here and we put that second and we put our rotation matrix here. Okay. We multiply the matrices, we get the rotated points matrix. We take our results from that, bring it over here, and we add 
each element to their corresponding components of the uh, axis point. Uh, so we use the axis point to fill in these parts. You'll just see it's repeated over and over again. Okay. And here are our results in Cartesian coordinates. So here's the first point, the second point, and the third point. Okay. We're not done yet, though. We have to plug these or convert them into polar coordinates. So let's do the first one, 2.42 and 1.84. So 2.42 and 1.84. 0.84 and negative 1.81. 0.84 and negative 1.81. 4.35 and negative 1.01. 4.35 and negative 1. Oops. Negative 1.01. Okay, just double checking here. You'll see that these are rounded. I'll probably correct this for the version that you can download. But anyway, these are your rotated points. Now, if you wanted to uh, write it another way, again, you could put it uh, instead of in a stack like this. I would recommend just making an open set sign Write your points like this, and write the second point, write the third point, and then close with another set sign. Now, I want to point something out. It's very important that the corresponding points remain in the same order. So if the original point was first, its corresponding point should be first. Second should be second, and third should be third. Okay. Otherwise, the answer uh, could be considered incorrect. 